Okay, everybody, so I'm currently here in the uh, 1998 Honda, and uh, i got a little story here for you. So, um, earlier today, um, I actually, um, I took this car out because um, it hadn't run for a while, and uh, I, was, I was going, oddly enough, to, um, to an auto parts store, uh, just to get a couple of things because I, I, I washed and waxed my car today. And um, on, the way, on the way going to the um, auto parts store, um, everything was fine. And then um, on the way back, that's when I noticed um, things weren't right. Everything felt okay, but what I noticed was, I mean, you, you probably already know what the video is about, but um, over there is the uh, temperature gauge, as you can see. And normally in this car, the, the gauge kind of hangs around here, or kind of goes up just a little bit. It, like, this is like its general area. I don't know why it flexes like that, but the car has done that for years. But what I noticed was, as I was driving, um, the gauge got up to about midpoint here, and I was like... Uh, that's higher than usual. Then it kind of snuck its way back down. Now I remember, I remember my car doing that um, about a decade ago now, actually, um, when it had when it had its um, coolant leak. So I was like, all right, so let me keep watch. So I'm driving the car along, and then I see the gauge creep up to about here, and I was like, oh, okay, that's not good. So basically, and you can you can already see here at some point I put the heat on full blast because that that can kind of help stabilize the uh, temperature. And then um, as I'm going along, it seems to go down a little bit as I drive, but, you know, this and that, and then, um, so I was like, all right, so something's definitely going on here, but even as I'm moving, f I'm, I'm thinking maybe the fans weren't working, but what I noticed was, as I was driving forward, or let me say it again, as I was moving, the gauge was still going up, so I was like, all right, so this is, this is a problem, and then as I get towards the driveway, the gauge kind of goes up to about here, and kind of holds, and I was like, oh, okay, that, this is way too high. It never got up to H, thankfully, but when, when it's up there, I was like, okay, that's definitely not good. So I got into the driveway, immediately um, pulled into the driveway, uh, shut the car off, and um, popped the hood. And uh, here's what I found. <sighs> so immediately, you can, um, if you look over here, you can already see stuff on the radiator hoses, on the transmission, on the uh, starter there. So you, you immediately know, okay, the car must have had some kind of cooling leak. And actually, if you look right over here, yep, right there on the radiator, when I popped the hood, I saw um, some coolant uh, just gently bubbling and kind of um, making like a sound over here. And coolant was bubbling out here and going onto there. So there's the problem. So it's unfortunate when that happens. Um, I, I told my dad he knows um, the, we'll have to bring the car to the service place and probably needs a, 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 a new radiator. Um, one thing I did do was, um, on, not every car will do this, but on this particular car, if you turn the key just to on, even without the engine running, and you have the AC on, the fans actually will run. And that's what I did. I wanted to cool the radiator down a little bit, so what I did was I turned the key back to on without the engine running, and then um, the, and put on the air conditioning, and the fans came on. And I let them run for about maybe two minutes, and I felt the air coming out was like not as hot, so I figured, okay, now's a good time. So I turned it off, and um, everything is fine. It never fully overheated. Um, the engine still runs fine. Uh, but yeah, so this is, um, the car's gonna have to get a new radiator, it looks like. And, um, oh, I will say this too, in case you're wondering, um, when I pulled into the, when I pulled into the driveway, I quickly opened the door, and I did hear the fans running, so the fans were working, but I, I guess what happened was, it might just be an older radiator, and, you know, this is what happens with plastic, gotta love it. Um, it cracked here, the coolant seeped out, and it got to the point where the engine was having trouble, um, maintaining its temperature, so, and you can see here just how much came out. Again, look at this. Yeah, here's the hoses, there's the starter, there's the transmission, and you can just see how much of a mess it made here, so. And also, yeah, I also checked the overflow bottle, and completely empty, so, I mean, you, you already see what the problem is here. So, I might, um, let's see here. I might, uh, Maybe just top this up as a temporary fix, just so. Luckily, the, the service place is very close to the house, which is very, very fortunate. So, um, but just, just, just for a safety, I guess I'll just top. I mean, it's a very short-term fix. I'll top this up, put stuff in the overflow bottle. I'm sure it'll drive to the service place just fine, because I went a lot further than that today when the, when the temperature was fluctuating. But this is the point of this video, guys. Okay. I would never have known if that any of this was happening if there was no temperature gauge on the dash. And that's one of the things I cannot stand about newer cars. Since about 2014, I would say, I've noticed a lot of newer cars out there don't have a temperature gauge. That has to be one of the stupidest things I have ever seen. Yes, oh yeah, okay, they have the cold light and the hot light. Doesn't count. Because when the hot light comes on, how hot is everything going? Is it is it like it was running hot like it was here? Or is it to the point where your radiator is going to blow and your engine is going to destroy itself? Okay? I mean, 
I don't know what people think they're doing by just by not including a temperature gauge. I mean, not having an oil pressure gauge is bad enough, but I mean, I'm not afraid about that because at least in my car, I'm very good with my oil care. I make sure the oil is up to the top and it's changed regularly. So I think I'm going to be okay in that regard. But I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, because like, cause like I said, if there was no temperature gauge there, I never would have known this was going on. And also, you know, if you're going to... Tem temperature gauges and fuel gauges should be analog, okay? I have had it with all this digital nonsense, all these digital gauges. No, analog will show sensitivity much better than digital ever will. Just by the way that temperature gauge was pointing, I knew something was wrong. And there you guys have it. So I guess that's everything. So thank you. Thanks to that temperature gauge, which is to show you how hot um, the engine coolant is, I knew something was wrong because it was higher than normal. But thankfully, because I saw that, I knew I knew to get the car get the car home as soon as I can, put it in park um, park it in the driveway, turn it off, and prevent this car from being on the next episode of Just Rolled In. Okay, because I mean, um, any person who has a car needs to know about those things. So thankfully, because because of something useful, everything's okay. Could probably get a new radiator. Things will be fine. But the point to bring home, guys, here is that. If you're shopping for a new car, or even a used car, okay, and you get into the car and you find out it has no temperature gauge, do not buy it. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.